Um, yeah. So, hi everyone. Um, I think first of all we should uh, uh, just address the fact that Anna Maria Sachani isn't with us today. Um, she was the driving force behind this abstract, but she's on parental leave. Hopefully she can join us online, but thank you, Anna Maria. Um, so unfortunately, you're just left with Stefani and myself uh, to present this. Um, so I'm Aaron Rees, and I am the research fellow in action research on the project. And, and I'm Stefania Zardinilla Cedelli. I'm the research fellow in the textile area working in sound, uh, sonic investigations. So, we're here on behalf of the Congruence Engine project, um, and it's a, a three-year project uh, supported under the Towards the National Collection Program, or TANC, uh, which is funded by the Arts and Humanities Research Council in the UK. Um, the TANC projects are all led by museums, galleries, archives, and libraries, and are experimenting with a range of different ways to bring together uh, digital collections in the UK under uh, this idea of a a national collection, um, acknowledging the inherent complexities and difficulties around the word national in this context. Um, this is our project North Star, um, and it's a description of the project that we created collaboratively within the project um, during our opening conference in February 2012, um, and we use it as a guide to check in to make sure that as the project snakes and diverges, um, that we're still talking to what we wanted to achieve that doesn't mean that the North Star can't change as well. We, we bring it back to workshops we do and see if it still reflects what we're trying to achieve with the project. Um, one of our key questions is exploring how digital methods and tools uh, often used in the digital humanities can support a better connected collection of cultural heritage material in the UK. Um, we're conducting the project using systemic action research, and that's kind of my part of this uh, in, in the project. Um, uh, and it's a, it's a methodology that kind of acknowledges that there's no such thing as objective truth. Um, there are just multiple interpretations uh, that are all informed by the way in which we, we live our lives uh, and an array of lived experiences. So systemic action research is kind of insistent in embracing multiple perspectives, um, different ways of knowing and developing an orientation of inquiry that does not fixate on a single roadmap. Um, instead, it works this idea of emergence. Um, it's the key way to enable the most important issues to the people involved in the project to, to lead the research. Um, so this kind of method in a large, interdisciplinary, complex project really does test the boundaries of collaboration. So um, we're a collaboration between academics, uh, GLAM institutions, community historians, curators, digital humanities professionals, documentation specialists, information architects, and software engineers. So there's, there's lots of us involved. There's, there's um, 25 uh, partner organizations with the Science Museum uh, leading the project. Um, other partners include universities, national, regional, and local museums and archives, national community heritage organizations, and technology and data partners, uh, including Wikidata and uh, something called Mad Lab in the UK, which is creative technologists. They're really exciting. So amongst these 25 organizations, um, there are about 75 people involved in the project in some way or another. Um, counted that recently, and it's just kind of mind-blowing that there's 75 of us. Um, uh, and we all have different types of connection to the project. Some of us are working full-time. Some of us work a fraction of the time. Some of us are paid. Some of us are unpaid. So there's already these kind of inequalities and different uh, approaches to needing to uh, operate with the, the project built into it. Um, so we've tried to be mindful of that in how we set up the project. So being open and flexible um, and having a collaborative ethos is something that we've tried to kind of really build from the beginning. Um, and this quote here is from our project uh, principal investigator, Tim Boone. And essentially, it says that we're not building a congruence engine. Um, we are the congruence engine. We are the participants. We are the ones in, in, enacting the work of the project. Um, so the emergent nature of action research means that we are constantly doing, researching, developing through the questions and refining our processes as we go. Um, 
And we've come to the point where our multiple investigations, um, sometimes in parallel, sometimes interwoven, um, they're all coming to cohere around this idea of a national collection as a social machine. And we've already seen from some of the presentations about this idea of the, the social dynamics being key to how we operate. And we're really seeing that. So here we see the potential of a national collection as, na the potential of a national collection as contingent on active collaboration between a wide range of people and machines. Um, so by people we mean producers and consumers of research data and cultural heritage data. And by machines we mean a variety of different digital techniques, tools, and applications. So we, we're trying to develop a, a national collection of social machine. We, as the congruence engine, are trying to enact that ourselves as producers of data, as users of data, and as uh, technical developers as well. So it'll be no surprise to you here that um, digital humanities, digital heritage, um, they're all seen as generally located within the larger history of interdisciplinarity um, in the humanities. Um, both digital humanities and digital heritage work, um, they've been heavily shaped uh, by collaboration inside and outside of academia and with cultural heritage institutions as well. And I think it was Max Keeman who said that um, one of the defining characteristics of digital humanities is an emphasis on interdisciplinary uh, collaboration and as a meeting place between computational domains and new humanities. Um, and in our project as well, digital humanities is, is really closely connected with capacity building, as we've seen through the other presentation as well. So there's definitely some themes going am amongst us here. Um, the, there are a variety of people involved in the project. Um, some of us have mediocre experience with the digital, some of us have no experience, some of us are very experienced. Um, so we're needing to try and adapt and navigate that as well. But as well as the people who are, have a wide range of skills with the digital, um, we're also then bringing new ideas about how to use those tools for musicological questions and humanities questions that maybe they haven't used the tools for before. So there's this mutual exchange going on. Um, we try to avoid the heavy word of training um, and we like mutual collaboration or, or mutual exchange more. So I'm just gonna quickly talk about action research. Um, it's uh, an overarching methodology that we use. Um, it comes in many forms and used in a variety of different contexts, uh, from education, social care, to international development. Another method, it's rooted in pragmatism. Um, and there's a firm belief that a multiplicity of ways of knowing is essential to enabling change in any complex social, political, and technical environment. Um, so on that basis, action research seeks to better understand the systems that operate in the world through undertaking actions, um, then observing them, reflecting on what happens, learning from them, and then redoing that cycle again. Um, so in, embodying the action research for orientation towards the multiplicity of perspectives, um, we're running a series of parallel investigations, um, all led by different people and cohered through a centralized kind of investigation meeting that happens in the project. So whilst this diagram is quite helpful in illustrating the basic concept of action research, um, it doesn't fully represent the complexity of our project at the moment with multiple investigations going on. In Congruence Engine, myself and my co-facilitator, Helen Graham, um, have tried to embed these four principles in the work that we've done from the onset. Um, and it's particularly inspired by Danny Burns' work on systemic action research. So we tried to establish flatter hierarchies using working group models um, to allow people in the project to be semi-autonomous anyway, um, to an extent. Uh, for ideas to emerge from the people who have got the capacity and the interest to, to take them forward, rather than being uh, kind of top down. Um, and I think that uh, this idea of emergence that we're working with as well is sometimes leads to uncertainty. Um, so we have acknowledged that sometimes the different instantiations of hierarchy and working groups that we uh, try to put in are needed. Um, but I think that it has been quite complex to navigate at times. Um, perhaps it's been a bit unsettling for some of the more technical people in our project who uh, are used to more of a delivery mode of operating, whereas we're kind of, for the first year of the project, it was all very kind of, let's see what happens, let's see what emerges, let's follow this 
option and follow that option. Um, so we wanted to try and kind of dismantle that client service model that's been set up with a lot of digital technologists where uh, the humanists say, these are the questions that we're doing, um, do something digital and help us. And we wanted to try and kind of take that apart. Um, but I think uh, it has, we've had to tweak that model quite a bit because it's, it's quite an ingrained kind of approach to, to working digitally. Um, so that's been quite difficult. Um, to help facilitate the collaboration, uh, we've been using a variety of different tools. Um, so uh, we use Basecamp uh, for sharing and discussing and announcements. And we use Notion for our project documentation and knowledge development. Um, we use GitHub for the code that we're developing as part of the investigations. Box we use to um, share our work in data sets. And then we've also been experimenting with a, a digital storytelling tool called Yarn. And I'm just gonna quickly talk about um, some of the workshops that we do, and then I'm gonna hand over to Stefania. Um, so being geographically distributed, we are not able to meet in person as much as we'd like. Uh, many of us in the project find face-to-face -face conversations incredibly helpful for working through the more complex parts of the project. Um, and when we do meet in project-wide workshops, we use a variety of different facilitation techniques um, that action research really leans into. Um, we've had four large workshops and uh, quite a few kind of smaller workshops so far. And I realize that holding workshops isn't a particularly innovative thing to do, but I don't think that we often critically reflect on facilitation in workshops as a key method uh, and a place for collaboration to really take place. Um, so in these workshops, um, my co-facilitator and myself often lead uh, our time together. And um, in this, we try to actively and purposefully think about how to create the space where collaboration can really happen. Um, sometimes that means cultivating consensus amongst people. Sometimes that means allowing and introducing divergence. Um, and uh, sometimes it means that we need to do both and bring people back together at the end. But it, we need to like, make sure that people are able to voice their concerns in a really productive way. Um, so as action research facilitator Jenny McEwen illustrates, I'm, I'm not gonna read this quote out for time reasons, but um, yeah, a facilitator needs to do many things and that you just need to be able to respond to the situation in the room at the time. So uh, some of the techniques that we really like using include uh, liberating structures. I'm not sure if any of you have come across these. So liberating structures is a really great facilitation menu that you can use uh, with lots of different techniques. Um, and we also use open space technology a lot as a way to help allow divergence um, for, for people in the, in the workshop themselves to lead what the, what the conversation is going to be. Um, and this is just an example of a workshop that we've done recently that really does throughout the day um, introduce like facilitator led stuff, then step back and allow other people to take control and then allow divergence, introduce divergence, bring it back together and try to cohere. So that's kind of some of the methods that we, we, we use there. And now I'm gonna hand over to Stefania to talk a little bit more about some of the investigations that we're doing and how collaboration features in that. Yes, um, as Aram mentioned, the investigation pro process is one of the uh, elements that emerged from this um, generating uh, emergent and uh, collaborative way of working. So um, the, the first investigations uh, originated uh, right from a co-production workshop last year. Um, so we decided to kind of collaboratively explore a set of research inquiries um, at the intersection between the historical and digital domains. And at the beginning, we decided to, um, to act in a four-week period, which we called uh, Work Alongside. Um, and this first round of investigation kind of set the, uh, the scene for future collaboration in the project. In the second round of investigation um, in the last year, um, we are uh, working, uh, we had a, what we have called a digital turn, so we are mostly um, focused on um, trying to kind of find um, uh, collaborations um, across the, the quest question of digital and collecting connection and finding how we can use machine learning techniques to transform analog data into machine readable format in order to be um, open linked um, and, and connected. And we are actively um, 
uh, 16 active investigation in the project, um, which involved overall um, more than 25 to 30 data sets and over 15 to 20 team members, which have different roles as, uh, yes, as Aaron um, said. So uh, I think um, one of the things that it would be nice to kind of um, focus in is um, to understand how an investigation works. So this is one of the investigation I am involved. Um, it, it looks at oral history data and try to kind of find techniques to connect these uh, really rich and um, personal and emotional material to museum objects and collections. Uh, so we started from the first round uh, using digital storytelling and digital collaborative um, uh, and digital curatorial tools uh, to find a way to kind of um, um, visualize the connections enclosed in the memories of, um, um, in this case, three Italian uh, textile workers. And then in the second round of investigation, we, um, in it, we, we wanted to kind of expand this question at scale. So we started a collaboration, which was not already in the project with the University of Leicester. So this was another feature of action research because uh, um, we are not working only with the partners already in the project, but we also um, uh, created new collaborations outside. Um, and the Institute of Digital Culture, um, in this case, is contributing to the um, exploration of a visual exploratory tool um, which enable us to understand how we can um, use um, automatic speech recognition and natural language processing to find topics and clusters and improve the accessibility and uh, searchability of archives. And this is, again, the structure that Aaron showed, so how it, it did work in an investigation. So we had the first round, um, in the first workshop, uh, working with um, the Congress Engine Partner, and then we um, started a new collaboration with the University of Leicester. Uh, and then in the third iteration of the investigation, which are going to start in the next month, we are going to kind of expand further um, with a co-designing workshop to um, develop further, um, further um, um, visualizations that can be helpful for other domain experts. Just to conclude, uh, we would like to kind of uh, draw um, some um, criticalities and opportunities of this approach, um, because we, um, we realize this, the action research can offer alternative ways of working in digital humanities um, that can be highly creative and generative, uh, but it requires, uh, requires extra time for mutual learning and exchange. So we, uh, we started with kind of uh, training, but as Aaron said, we, we, we interpret this more as a kind of mutual learning um, uh, dimension because uh, each of us has specific assumptions and way of working, um, came from a specific angle from digital heritage or digital humanities or historic domains, so we need to understand each other language. Um, and computational knowledge is distributed across the project in different ways. So in order to co-produce effective inquiries, we need to kind of um, have this space and time to understand and to learn from each other. Uh, another challenge, I think Ara mentioned uh, the client mode uh, uh, of working. So we had this kind of, um, um, I would say the tension at the beginning between a way of thinking about uh, focusing on the process rather than on the product. So usually um, in digital humanities, a common approach is to draft a minimum viable product uh, with a set of minimum fun functionalities um, that can be achieved. Um, but action research challenged us to think differently and to focus on the process and the same concept of national collection, collection as, a, as, a, as a social machine uh, and as a verb uh, uh, describes this idea of like not an entity that waits to be connected but a continuous process um, that is, um, um, needs to be activated. So um, this was challenging for us and requires to kind of find a way to understand when an investigation produces a good enough pr proof of concept that could include both the processual element and the technical output. And last but not least, uh, the action research has, has required an adaptive form um, approach, sorry, to the project management because this uh, generative wave of self-organizing meant that there weren't always clear pathways and this was difficult and disorientating sometimes. Um, and, um, uh, and of course, we are not where we are if we wouldn't have uh, uh, used this method and this methodology, but uh, it did come with learning from the project management team especially, and the same investigation process came from, from this um, emerging way of working. Um, 
just to finish, <laughs> we love this metaphor of, um, met uh, Aaron mentioned the North Star, um, and we feel this is a really kind of um, um, a good way to kind of describe how we feel in terms of research and some of team members, because we are like navigators who are charting the route towards our North Star, which is uh, the national collection as a social machine. And in this context, of course, um, failure is not um, uh, change, uh, learning uh, uh, requires also sometimes making something wrong, but learning by doing, so learning and adapting on, on this uh, learning as uh, in, in this metaphor. So yeah, we thank you for the attention and um, we will be really happy to have a conversation. We found very similarities across the different presentations, so I feel there will be a lot of discussion among us. <laughs> thank you.